Okay, we're here with Charlie Cloud, the Granbury School Board President, uh, who just uh, led the uh, school board in a budget workshop today. Uh, Charlie, what did this uh, this meeting uh, this meeting what what does this mean for the uh, for the general public? You think? Well, everybody know, everybody's aware that we've had a tremendous loss in state revenue. I mean, we're we're in a hole, and we've had a deficit budget. Because of budget cuts and reductions, it looks like we're going to come in with a balanced budget for this year, and we've got a plan in place to have a balanced budget for next year. But the, the face of public education is changing considerably. We're going to be much leaner than we have been in the past, and, and that's necessary. Uh, we're trying real hard to do this without cost of, you know, cost of services to students. We're, we want students to be serviced. We want, we want to be able to continue with all the current programs that we have, but there's just going to have to be some reductions. That's just the sad fact of the matter. And uh, what does this budget, uh, what will this mean to the taxpayers this year? Well, probably in reality, there's probably going to have to be some kind of little bump in taxes. Uh, it'll be very minimal, uh, if at all. Uh, you know, we've not raised taxes in 10 years. The overall tax rate has remained the same or been reduced for the last 10 years in a row. We might actually have to raise it a penny on the tax rate to kind of compensate. But that's still, we're still looking at that. We, we don't ever want to raise taxes unless it's just absolutely necessary. And uh, finally, what does this mean uh, for the educators of this district? Well, all in all, we've held, we, we've done, we've done pretty well. Now our educators are being asked to do more with less, but that's pretty much the way it is in the in the real world, uh, in the in the corporate world today. Everybody's having to do more with less, and in education fields, no different. We're going to have to ask our educators to do more with less. Our benefits are going to stay consistent. You know, it looks like our, our people are going to continue to draw their salaries. Uh, we're not going to, we're hoping to avoid a reduction in force. Uh, we think we can through attrition if we continue. But as you eliminate positions, you know, those, those educators that are left are going to have to pick up the slack. Thank you a lot. You bet. Thank you. Okay, we're here with Ron Mayfield, the Granbury School Superintendent. And, uh, Mr. Mayfield, the uh, school district faces a, faces a difficult year uh, coming up with the uh, reduction from, uh, in revenue from the, uh, from the state. Uh, so how does this, uh, this coming uh, budget year, how does this affect the, uh, uh, the citizens of this district? Well, I don't think that the citizens are recognized much effect. I think that probably our students and teachers are going to have more of an impact than anything else. You know, back in February, we adopted a 24 to 1 uh, staffing ratio in our secondary schools, and that'll be the primary item that comes into play this fall. So when our kids return to school this fall, they'll see larger numbers of students in each classroom. Our teachers will have a larger number of students in each classroom. Uh, they'll be uh, 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 have a larger uh, number of students in their load throughout the day. So uh, that's, that's going to be the biggest impact right now. You know, we lost uh, 6.4 million for the biennium and uh, we've been uh, reducing uh, staff uh, since I arrived. Uh, we've reduced staff 90 positions just this school year. Uh, all total, uh, it's, it's around 140 positions since I arrived in May 1 of 09. And, uh, okay, since we lost, uh, started reducing our number of positions, we've lost around 140 positions since May 1 of 09. It has allowed us to uh, go into these next this next biennium with this 6.4 million dollar loss and we able to come up we're able to come up with a balanced budget this year and if we continue through the reduction of about 50 more positions uh, we'll have a balanced budget for the 12-13 school year so uh, it, by the, a year from now, this district will have reduced uh, faculty and staff by about 190 positions, uh, which is uh, about 20% uh, of the faculty and staff that was in the district when I arrived. But because of that loss, we're able to absorb the uh, uh, 6.4 million that we've that uh, we've uh, lost from the legislative action, and we've not had to cut any programs or services for kids. The bottom line is the programs and services are going to look 
different than they did. But uh, the bottom line is we, we were overstaffed when I arrived, and what it amounts to, uh, we, we probably will, won't be overstaffed a year from now. We'll, we'll be pretty close to where we need to be. Okay, these uh, questionable uh, positions that uh, were discussed this last school year, uh, where where is the school district uh, on those positions? Well, I've actually in my presentation today, I, I replay, I recommended that we go ahead and keep several of those positions. I recommended that we would keep uh, uh, our elementary music teachers. Uh, I recommended that we'd keep the assistant principal position over at Brawner. Uh, I recommended that we'd keep our nurses, uh, or at least a portion of the nurses. Uh, I recommended that we'd keep our security guards there at the high school. I recommended that we'd keep uh, there's a, a technology library uh, person there that we would keep. So uh, we've got several of those positions that I've recommended we keep and we still be able to have a balanced budget this next year. Now there was some question raised uh, at the budget hearing today, uh, some question about some of those other positions that I recommended that we might go ahead and eliminate and uh, they did ask me to put that on the agenda which we really plan to do anyway and we'll have that on the agenda and have a, a final decision on what we're going to do with those positions uh, Monday night next week. Okay, what about uh, the, the tax rate uh, that was discussed today? Uh, what, what about that for this coming year? Okay, well, our, obviously our maintenance and operation tax rate will remain the same. This past year, our interest in sinking tax rate was 10 cents. And as you know, our property values have declined this year. And your INS, interest in sinking tax rate, or your INS tax rate is totally based on your property values on whether it raised or lower. We have a certain expense that we have to go to. Now, we have a choice to go with a half a penny increase uh, uh, this year or a penny increase. Now, if we went a half a penny increase, then we would dip into that uh, debt service fund balance, which would get it pretty lean. And so I think the board felt more comfortable that we'd go for the penny increase, which would uh, help us significantly. Now, what that's going to do to the uh, each homeowner, it's not going to make too much difference because you're talking about one penny. And, uh, you know, if we go the half a penny this year, we know for sure we're going to have to go a half a penny or a penny next year. So we, we'll probably go ahead and go to the penny, and then hopefully that'll eliminate the need for uh, an increase next year. So we'll, we're probably looking at a, a dollar uh, 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 fifteen instead of a dollar fourteen for this coming year. And uh, there was some talk about uh, a uh, under the rollback limit or at the rollback limit uh, or, or something along those lines. Okay, if property values increase, uh, then you always roll back. Uh, question comes into play. If your property values increase and you try to maintain the same tax rate, then there, there would be a, a limit there. So uh, our property values went down, so rollback doesn't even come into play this year. Okay. So that doesn't have any effect. Very good. Now, thank you, Mr. Mayfield. You're welcome.